Oh, and first I saw the love light in your eyes. I thought the world held naught but joy for me. And even though we've drifted far apart, I never dreamt but what I dreamt of thee. This is my sister, my dad and me crossing the finish line of the first Ironman triathlon in Ireland, which my dad organised and competed in, in 1987. World record, um, Running is his lifelong world. passion. He has competed in over 100 marathons and his ultra distances include running from Cork to Dublin, a number of 24-hour races, and he has represented Ireland in the 100 kilometres World Championships. He's an eccentric man, and when his life took an unexpected turn, I decided to make this documentary. Is that all right? That's beautiful, Daddy. Um, so if you want to go back, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here, or I'm going to ask you the safety thing. No, all within five minutes. We're, we're going to be done in five minutes, if you do what I tell you. <laughs> Running is a major part of my life. It's distinct from work, from home, from orders above or below. It's my quality time. You just get lost in space. That's one of the attractions. So at 38, I trained for a marathon, and that was the uh, beginning of the rot. Um, I totally engrossed myself in the running. I built my life around it. Uh, did he neglect his family? I don't know. Did he neglect his job? I don't think so. I wasn't a good 24-hour runner, but I was a bit better at the 100k. I had a sport for life up to the time I got this treatment, and um, how I'm going to come out of it, I don't know. But uh, I, I'm hell-bent on uh, going back and running again. I know when I was first told with prostate cancer, I, I drove out of Bowman Hospital and I came to a pedestrian crossing and there was a young fellow of about 11 who had a white stick. He was blind and he crossed in front of me and I said, Jesus, I, uh, I'm 64 and I've lived a fairly good life. But this young lad is only 11 and he has never seen and the odds are he never will. So what the hell am I moaning about? And that was a sobering experience. I'm now receiving cancer treatment for eight years. Uh, the first time I got um, radioactive needles shot into me and I was clear for five years. They did very well for a while. And then uh, I think um, when they stopped working, uh, the only thing left was chemo. Uh, you get uh, one week of hell and two weeks, which are normal, and it's a three-week cycle. So uh, I'm on one of the normal weeks now, but you couldn't, you couldn't interview me like this uh, on a bad week because... Um, I'd be like a fellow who had drunk three bottles of whiskey uh, without getting sick. How did you feel when the doctors told you, well, that you had to, you had to stop running? Well, it wasn't put to me that way. <clears throat> it was put that I'd cancer up my spine up to my neck with some holes. And if I fall on the road, uh, then... Uh, if I develop a hairline crack, particularly in around any of the holes, that um, th there'll be no painkiller that'll take away the pain. My first ambition is to run a 10K. And uh, I'll stay at that for a few months. Um, I would hope to reach a 10-miler. I might be satisfied with a 10-miler. I was told that uh, I wouldn't put on muscle while I was on chemo, but I would 
tend to preserve the muscle I have. So out in the shed, I can't do more than five minutes on the, on the bike. Uh, and then I have a bench where I stretch my uh, thighs here. Uh, I'm keeping these uh, quads exercised. Okay, just want you to do it as if we're not here and just look at what you're doing. Don't look at us. Yeah. Not looking at us. <laughs> and uh, then I roll over and I stretch my hamstrings. So on right. the bike, there's a certain amount of endurance. I've stretched my quads and my hamstrings. And these are major factors in running. Right. Uh, I'd also do a bit of yoga at night. But then I also do other forms of yoga. That's uh, breathing exercises and that type of thing. The body is the temple of the soul. Was that right? Well, I probably got it ass with. And I felt my body was being defiled by this chemical which was pumped into me. The medical profession does not approve of this type of thing. And I may well live <laughs> to regret doing it. But uh, I can't see how rehabilitation is all about sitting still in an armchair and being careful with yourself. Uh, this is a Taekwondo exercise. Um, former very aggressive karate, which I did a year of, you know. Um, What do you think happens to you after you pass, after you leave this world? After I die? Yeah. Yes, nobody knows. My friends who have died have never come back to tell me where they are or what they're doing. Sorry, that's maybe the type of thing you're, you're not supposed to hear, but that's the way that I see it. Now, I'm 71 years of age, and I've had a fairly satisfactory life. Uh, I had a, <coughs> a hypnotherapy practice one time. And you'd, a mantra was, you don't get screwed up about things you have no control over. Well, here I am. <laughs> I'm like it's Johnny, the same every fucking John, time. Johnny, Close the door the and shut up, will you? Come on, come on, no, come on, let's go. The car. What are you How are you anyway? Walk? How long have you been, um, Eddie, been running together? I'd say over 30 years. We've kept up the contact. Like he lives in Malahide, I live here, but we have running in common and we get on fairly well. And um, himself and Steve come out here on a Saturday training like we always did. But he, they have nothing to gain. They bring me for a walk around our Gillen and I find it, I can walk, I can walk down the hill. I find it hard to walk up the hill now. What? Would you think, think of a Martin? Would, would you? Yeah. Would you really? We're not running it. The chi walking is, is what I would do. And that involves shoving your hips forward. Yeah. At right angles here. And um, it's only walking, Mars. Yeah. It's only walking. I know, but you want to it's do not a fucking walking. dance, you, you know. You'd only be out there after six hours, you know. That's mm. that's a normal thing for and you, why, wouldn't why it, a Martin? Why does that <laughs> Right. Yeah, Morris, I'm not going to Morris. I think you should stick no. to just ordinary walking. Yeah, yeah, ordinary walking. Ordinary. You, you put your and what you do as it's meant to be. I'm going to Morris and I'll go with you and I'll stay with you for the 10 hours over there. I'm not going to for 10 fucking seconds. Running is all about delayed gratification. And um, in my illness now, uh, I see that um, gratification is down the road. Uh, my chemo has been stopped. So I expect, I expect some of my gratification will kick in, let's say in two months, when I can go out for an extended walk, like for two hours. Um, it's the way the world should plan, uh, not for immediate gain.
one of the things about ultra running is you pitch your sights in the distance. You pitch, uh, I mean, if you're running for 12 hours, you know there's another 12 to go. So uh, the reward is at the end. So you're working up to your reward. And the, the beautiful thing about it is that you're not conscious all the time. You're in your own little world of um, whatever it is. It has its own philosophy and uh, its own form of sanity. That when you come back to the real world, you see it differently. Sitting one day at the organ, I was weary and ill at ease. When my fingers slided slowly over the ivory keys, I knew not what I was playing or what I was dreaming of then. So I struck one note of beauty to the sound of a great amen. Right, and I fade into the distance. Shinny! Just a short sentence that you were doing really well there, but just no tangents about the financial crisis. Uh, so start again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Just you know, just it was a, a summary, a final statement of saying, "Who knows what tomorrow will bring?" And just a nice short statement. We don't. It's only going to be five minutes. We there can't go be, into. There must be songs that'll do that. No. Okay. So I'm going to count in on three. One, two, three. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? I don't know, but I've lived 71 years, and uh, I've done fairly well out of it. Uh, who, do, who knows, maybe there's a big bomb around the corner, that used to be the scare 20 years ago. So with that I say, you're better off not knowing the future. Fabulous! <laughs>